Hello everybody, I am Nico D. Today I want to talk about benchmarking CPUs of single board computers. This isn't as straightforward as you would think. There are a lot of factors that can change the results of benchmark tools. There is uh, the benchmark tool version, there's throttling if it gets too hot, 32 bits versus 64 bits. This always gives a big difference in most of benchmark tools. The kernel version, the software versions, the background processes, uh, is it Debian or Ubuntu or any other distro? Uh, many, many different uh, factors can change those results. Uh, I've tried many different benchmark tools to compare them with each other to see which benchmark tool does best to compare CPUs of uh, different single board computers. This is because one of my subscribers came to me with the results of benchmarks that explaining computers did. In these results, the Oldroid XC4 seemed to do very bad. The ROC64 did better in these results, so this was very strange. So I wanted to know what is the reason of these strange results. I know explaining computers didn't do anything wrong. He just gave us the results he had. I've done a lot of benchmarks with different tools just to see how the tools react on different uh, systems and in different distros. So let's go to the results. First let's look at the results of explaining computers. So he used boot time, sysbench and gimp. Boot times are very hard to compare. He used different distros, so on some he used Debian, on some he used Ubuntu. So this changes the boot time. Also some SBCs do longer before they start booting the operating system. So this changes the time too. So boot times are not really useful. Also Raspbian has been optimized for the Raspberry Pi, so the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus boots the fastest. Then Sysbench. So here you see the ROC64 did 7.1 seconds, so it's the fastest of all these single board computers at Sysbench. This is very strange, the ROC Pro64 should be a lot faster and the Oldroid XU4 should be more than twice as fast. Then GIMP. The ROC Pro64 does this best with 7.5 seconds, the Tinkerboard S does 8.8 .8 seconds over it, the ROC64 16.8 seconds. So here you see these results are very different with Sysbench. So now let's find out why these results are so strange. Here is a file with all my results. So it's best to read everything on your own because there's a lot of information in it. So here are the 64-bit SBCs and underneath are the 32-bit SBCs. Ok, Raspberry Pi 3B and 3B Plus are 64 bits, but they only use 32 bits, so I put them in the 32 bits. Uh, so, I've used SBC Bench from Thomas Kaiser with CPU Miner 7-zip, uh, also Blender, GIMP, GTK Perf, and Sysbench. With Sysbench there are two different versions, so you get another version in Ubuntu Bionic than in Debian Stretch. And the results you get are also different. So in Bionic you get the number of events in 10 seconds, while in Stretch you get the time it took to do this calculation. We can already see a problem here with Sysbench. So with the NanoPy M4 Lubuntu Bionic ARM HF, which is 32 bits, uh, the result was 1666 and compared to the Armbian Bionic which was 26,763. So you can see that the 32 bit and 64 bits are not comparable in Sysbench. And also different distros give different results. This shows why the XU4 was so bad in the results of explaining computers, because it's 32 bits compared to those 64 bit systems. If you look to the CPU miner results of the NanoPy M4, you see that Bionic does a lot better than Stretch. So we can only compare the same distro with each other. Here the results of CPU miner all done in Armbian Bionic. So you see that the Nano PC T3 Plus is the fastest than NanoPy M4, Kadas Vim. The Oldroid C2, it didn't work in Armbian Bionic. But uh, in Armbian Stretch it was faster than the ROC64, it would have been around 5.5 kilohash per second. And the ROC64 is the slowest over here. Only 64-bit computers can do this test, so I can only show these. Here are the 7-zip multicore results. I'm only using the decompression numbers because this uses more of the CPU than compression. 
Again, the Nano PC T3 Plus is the fastest, then the Oldroid XC4, then the Nano Pi M4, then the Tinkerboard Kadas Vim 2 Max, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, Oldroid C2, Rock 64, Raspberry Pi 3B and the Orange Pi Plus 2. So here you see that the 64-bit systems are in the same order as with CPU miners, but here the 32-bit systems do a little bit better than 64-bit systems. Here are the BMW Blender benchmark results. So again the Nano PC T3 Plus is the fastest, then the Oldroid XC4, Nano Pi M4, Kadas Vim 2 Max, Oldroid C2, Rock 64, Tinkerboards and as last Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I didn't do it with the Raspberry Pi 3B or with the Orange Pi because you see Raspberry Pi 3B Plus was 5 hours 47 minutes. I'm not gonna do a slower SBC with this. Here 32-bit systems do worse than 64-bit systems and also the version of Blender is important. The version 2.72B is faster than the version 2.79B. The RAM speed is also very important for Blender. That's why the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with its DDR2 is so slow. Here my GIMP results. I have used another effect than explaining computer so I've got different results. Here again different versions are installed in different distros so this makes it harder to compare. Also only one core is used so it only shows the single core performance of the SBC. That is why the Nano PC T3 Plus does worse than the Nano Pi M4. The Nano Pi M4 has got 2 cores of 2 GHz, while the Nano PC T3 Plus only has got 8 cores of 1.4 GHz. If you would like to use SBC Bench, you type in this to download it, and then to run it, you type in this. This will take about a half hour. SBC Bench is a gathering of all different benchmark tools. You get a nice output file with all the data afterwards. You can see the temperature, you can see the real clock speeds, you can see the RAM speeds, the latency for the RAM. So it's a very good tool. To run 7-zip it is very easy. You just type in 7z and then b. If you look here to the percentage usage, you see that in compression it only uses about 400% of the cores while at decompression it uses more than 500%. So it's better to use decompression numbers because this uses more of the cores. For sysbench you type in this, so at num threads you type in the number of cores you want to use. I don't trust sysbench, it doesn't give me believable numbers. You can't compare 64 with 32 bits, you can't compare stretch with bionic, and even when you use only bionic it gives weird results. The Nano PC T3 Plus done it a lot worse than the Nano Pi M4, so I don't really trust this. And this is how I used GIMP, so I just used uh, the result of my Blender benchmark. And then filters, artistic and Van Gogh, Van Gogh, and OK. So the problem with GIMP is that there are too many versions, you would have to compile it yourself to always have the same version, and the different versions give different results. But when you use the same version it gives a believable score of the single core performance. So my conclusion is, it's very hard to benchmark the CPU performance of an SBC. There are many factors that come into play, uh, it's best to always use the same distro, uh, you have to cool your SBC so it doesn't throttle. I've used a fan with all my SBCs and I've made sure it doesn't throttle. Different benchmark tools give different results. Certainly if you compare 32 bits with 64 bits, almost all tools are bad with this. And again, Christopher from Explaining Computers didn't do anything wrong. He wanted to show real life tasks on the distro that was most used on the SBC. He explains this very good in his own video, so certainly watch his video. For me the 7-zip benchmark is the most trustworthy. This doesn't use 100% of all cores, but if you use the decompression numbers it's closer to 100%. I use Blender because it tests the stability of the system. Also the RAM speed is very important for Blender, but you can't compare 32 bits with 64 bits with that, so Blender isn't perfect either. Also noteworthy is that the ROG64 has gotten a lot faster since my review video about it, then it ran at 1.3 GHz and now it's at 1.5 GHz and it's very stable too, so it has gotten a lot better. 
there's a lot more information to be found in my text file, so read that if you want to know more. Thank you for watching, I hope you'll like my video, see you later, bye!